2, Robert Stigwood. Before Robert became the empire you know him as, he was merely Robert Stigwood Associates Limited, a talent agency for TV commercial actors. One of those actors, John Layton, found a giant fan base of mostly teenage girls and even a fan club. Stigwood realized he had something to capitalize on and started shopping him around various record labels after asking him if he could sing and getting the answer, yes, sort of. Eventually, John and Robert met Joe Meek, an independent producer at the time. Layton's first single was pulled, since another artist on the same label was recording it. Of course, John and Robert kept on going. This is a recurring theme. Layton recorded Johnny Remember Me, it hit number one on the British charts, and Robert had become a music producer. Stigwood had a business model of complete control over the star that was threatened by, you guessed it, the Beatles. They wrote their own songs. They had staggering amounts of creative control. Oh no! But you don't get big in the music industry without knowing how to adapt. And Robert would with the help of Brian Epstein. Brian was, of course, the manager of the Beatles, and he was fed up with it. At this point, managing the Beatles was all ego, and it didn't even have the fun parts of that. He didn't want this. He wanted to go manage bullfighters in Spain, apparently. But in Robert, he found an out. He found an heir. And so, Robert started considering selling his company, NEMS Enterprises, to Robert Stigwood. This is as good a time as any to explain that the Beatles did not like Robert Stigwood. And that threw a wrench in this transaction. They told Epstein that if he sold NEMS to Stigwood, they would only make out-of-tune recordings of God Save the Queen for the rest of their contract. And you wouldn't want your top artists to become petty pranksters, would you? So, in 1967, NEMS was not completely sold to Stigwood. Instead, only 51% of the company was given to Robert and his financial backer, David Shaw. Sadly, Brian would pass away later in 1967, which would have poised Robert to take over NEMS, but the Beatles did not want to work with him. So he left with a golden handshake to form RSO, the Robert Stigwood Organization. The next few years were pretty good for both parties. Robert had good success with Cream, Eric Clapton, in Solo and the Bee Gees. He also expanded into other fields like Broadway productions and, of course, movies. The Beatles released five more albums before calling it quits, and all members had varying degrees of success on their own. And that could have been where the story ended. A weird mini feud between two music industry powerhouses. But then, 1974 came. And that leads to...